Hey, good to see you again here with Kira Lane from the Calgary Chieftains. And we're going to be discussing a couple of unique sports that we're not as familiar with here in North America, but you will be familiar with the combination of sports that these two involve. What are we talking about? Well, let's start Gaelic football. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Gaelic football is a hybrid sport. It's uh, one of two national sports in Ireland. Gaelic football is a uh, pretty fast moving sport. It's played on grass. It's a mix of basketball, soccer, rugby, with a little bit of volleyball thrown in there as well. Tell us a little bit about the rules because they're not actually as complicated though as one might think. I think when you first see the sport, um, initially you might be thinking, oh my gosh, it seems like a sport of a million rules and no rules at the same time. It's a forward moving game, very similar to soccer, where the object is to score the ball, uh, so it's a round uh, leather ball, and you're going to score it into a net, not, a, not too unlike the ones that we have here. So if you score into the, the net at the bottom, you'll get three points or a goal, and then if you put the ball between the two posts at the top, then you'll get one point. The object of the game is simply that, to, to move the ball forward and put the ball either in the net or over the bar. But one of the rules in Gaelic football is that you are limited to four steps. So after you take four steps, you've got to do something with the ball, and that's where we start to bring in some of the skill sets of other sports. So if you've ever seen a a soccer player juggling the ball, uh, it's what we call a solo, which is where you kick the ball back to yourself, then that's going to reset your, your step count again and give you another four steps. Where you bring in a little bit of basketball is that uh, you can also bounce the ball and again that resets your four steps so you can continue on with your playing motion. Uh, alternatively, you can just pass the ball off to another player or if you're in a good spot, give it a lash and, and put it over the bar or into the net. You can't throw the ball necessarily, but you are going to do similar to uh, underarm volleyball serve. It's called a hand pass where you're going to knock the ball off with your palm using your hand to kind of punch the ball to your teammate. In addition to that, you can also kick the ball. So much like a soccer goalie will kick the ball out, you can kick the ball from your hands. You can also play it along the floor, just like a typical soccer scenario as well. It does have a little bit of everything in terms of moving the ball. So the ball in Gaelic football, reminds me of a volleyball slash soccer ball. Yeah, absolutely. So you can see the stitching is very, very similar. So it's a yeah. leather ball. Uh, this is a size four, so this is a ladies Gaelic football. And the uh, the lads tend to play with a size five, uh, which is the exact same size as a soccer ball. Uh, you will find they're a little bit weightier than a soccer ball. Once you actually play Gaelic football with a size five, you do find that the weight of the ball is, is definitely heavier. So therefore it takes a, a lot more strength to move the ball in order to facilitate faster play for ladies. It's a size four that they use. So it makes it a little bit easier to move and keep that fast pace going. What about for kids? It's a slightly smaller size ball again for kids and again it is that slightly lighter weight. It just facilitates uh, better learning from them, better skill development so they can actually jump on in and, and get straight into it. Okay Kira, so that's Gaelic football. Here we are in Canada, which, you know, really loves their hockey. Yes. I'm thinking that a lot of people will be interested to know more about hurling. Yes, absolutely. So uh, hurling is uh, one of our heritage sports in Ireland. Hockey, it's said back in the day, actually came from hurling when Irish immigrants moved over to the East Coast and couldn't find a flat surface to play on. And so therefore um, they started playing hurling on ice. And even the word puck um, actually is an Irish uh, word for the word strike. It's a very exciting sport, uh, very fast paced, and it's the fastest field sport in the world. It basically is is a, a hybrid, like a mix of uh, field hockey and lacrosse is probably the easiest way to, uh, to describe it. It is one that has a lot of skill to it, but again, once you've played a little bit of hockey, ice hockey or field hockey, or a little bit of lacrosse, you'd be surprised the amount of skill that you actually bring to the sport without even realizing it. The rules are also similar to Gaelic football. Absolutely. Definitely the scoring. Yes, the rules, for right? sure, yeah. So the pitch layout is the exact same. You're talking about a field space roughly the size of two soccer pitches for Gaelic and for hurling. In the same style of goals, again similar to what we have here. Same scoring point system. The number of steps is also very similar. So you've got four steps and again you've got to do something with the ball, whether it's pass the ball or play the ball on the floor. So there are a lot of similarities to Gaelic football as well. Our ball is called a slither. This again is a size four. This is a, a ladies slither. The gents would play with a size five, very similar to the way the ball sizing is different in Gaelic football. It's probably around about the size of a baseball, but certainly lighter. It is probably as hard as a baseball. This is a, a hurl or hurley stick and it's basically the, the stick that you're going to use to move the, the ball forward. So this is what we call a composite stick. It's not made of natural wood, whereas typically at home in Ireland, you actually would have a hurl usually made of ash. Unfortunately, the climate in Alberta doesn't really uh, bode well for ash sticks here because they tend to crack very easily. So we tend to get these ones imported, which lasts a little bit longer. But again, the exact same weight and shape as, as mm. a typical hurling stick. In hurling, we pride ourselves on, on it being a very fast field sport with a lot of skill. But there's also an element of bravery involved too, uh, because this is your 
your protective equipment, which is your helmet. Other than that, you're in your cleats, you've got your hurl, and you're chasing after the slither. So the helmet is a little bit similar to a hockey helmet. You'll find that the grill is not quite as dense as maybe a hockey helmet. And that's really to allow more vision on the field because you're following quite a small ball at quite a fast pace. So they want to give you as much vision on the field without compromising your safety as well. What are some of the challenges for here in North America? I think a lot of it is just lack of knowledge that, that the sport exists. We don't have a, a strong foothold on, on Canadian TV, for example, uh, where they actually show a lot of the sports either online or, or on TV. And therefore, I think that a lot of people really just hear about it through word of mouth or maybe see us playing in a park somewhere and like, what are you guys playing? We've made some strides this year in terms of hosting learn to play sessions, which is breaking it right down to the absolute basics for people that have never seen the sport at all. We've had some great experiences with that and getting all uh, nationalities of people involved. Certainly a challenge in terms of getting it out there to people sometimes. And a very vibrant community here in Calgary. So let's just discuss where do we play it and, and talk about those fields. So we're based out of uh, Bowness in the northwest of Calgary at the moment. We do our main trainings up there in the summer months where we have some fields based at the Our Lady of the Assumption School. In the winter months, it, it varies place to place where we can get a little bit of space to go indoors and make sure that we're getting people to run around in the winter months too. What do you say to, to tell people, you know, hey, you really need to come out and try this? It's a great way to meet people and we are a very welcoming club. It doesn't matter your skill set or if you've never even seen the sports before, chances are you're going to have something already in your repertoire that you don't know yet that will fit into either of our sports and it's a great opportunity to come along and try something a little bit different. They are two quite different sports when you see them being played but at the same time there's so much crossover that you may come just for Gaelic and, and really find out that hurling is actually something that I'm really interested in too. We have adult programs for men's and ladies for both sports and then we also have youth development programs running as well and if you are a parent that wants to get their, their child involved in something that will really develop like a nice broad range of, of athletic skills. Hurling and Gaelic football really are our two ones to develop hand-eye coordination, general fitness, movement off the ball, things like that. We're always recruiting and always looking for new players to get involved. The main aim of our game is to build what we want to have as like a very welcoming community. Whether it's you're brand new to the sport or you've played the sport your whole life, it doesn't matter. Everyone comes in and if you don't have the skills, we'll teach you the skills. If you do want to get involved, we're, we're on our social media streams, Facebook, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We're also at calgarychieftains.com at our website. And if anybody wants to email us, it's just calgarychieftains at gmail.com. If you guys want any more info about the club, and let us know, and you're always welcome to come out and try a session. It's one of the bigger things is that we are a very, very affordable year membership club as well. So certainly in, in relation to costs per year, we're looking at less than $100 for a family membership for, wow. for youth teams. Great. And $150 for, for a year for, for adult memberships. And usually even there is, is some chieftains gear and things like that we try and provide every year. And it's fun. That's yes, the biggest thing, right? Absolutely. And I bet you have a wonderful community. Thank you so much, so absolutely. much, Kira. Thank you so much. You know, for joining us here on Sports Cal Sport Calgary's website, the Calgary Chieftains. Go check this out. <laughs> Gaelic football, hurling.